Hi, everybody. Hey. This is a wee bit of alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to our, our our new night. We were on Wednesdays, and now we're back to uh, now we're on to, to Tuesday. And uh, uh, after a couple of week layoff, uh, good to see you all again. Uh, tonight, I would like to explore yin chi and uh, get into that not just as an abstract concept but something that you feel so it's something that i um, like to get into that particularly since we're in the autumn the season where the it's governed by metal and the the direction is going from yang to yin so as that's that's the, the governing energy of the season so things start to quiet down and to coalesce more. So if summer is the ultimate yang, it's the expansion, the heart chi, fire. This we're, is sort of halfway between that and the, the yin of, of, of winter. So we're moving in the direction of yin. And so what I'd like to do is explore a little bit and share with you some of the stuff that I've I have to help to bring it into more of a felt sense and something where it's more recognizable, something you feel and, and are able to, uh, to use. Um, also, it has a lot to do with doing versus being. So the young impulse is to do, it's to reach out, it's to explore, which is you know, half of the show. The other half is drawing inward and moving into a state of being. So it, uh, so we'll kind of get into that as well. One of the uh, barriers that, that we encounter when we're learning something new is certain back off that, that happens whenever we're like, oh, I don't want to get it wrong. We, we're the, we get focused on the doing part and wanting to get that exactly right so that we tend to lose track of, of what's really happening, particularly in, in the stuff that we're dealing with here, which is getting into this, the power comes from the being. The power comes from assuming your state of being and then extending from that. And you know the term I've, um, uh, I've used for that, going into that state of wholeness that uh, accompanies that is, you know, I've used coherence as a, uh, as, as a way of describing how we get the energy to make that happen. And uh, Stan, you had a question about about coherence, I think that uh, you want to offer that to the group. Yes, um, I, I still like to keep working on coherence as much as I can. And one of the things that caught my eye in the, uh, what is it? It must be chapter nine on coherence. Uh, the bullet, one of the bullets is, uh, uh, having the brain uh, uh, get going with the heart uh, in order train. to improve the brain and train, train to the, to the and heart. Train. Yes, to entrain the uh, brain uh, to the heart. And um, looking at that, uh, it sounds really great, And but how, among other things, how okay. do we get from uh, it? the brain to get uh, entrained with the heart. Good. Because it so, seems uh, like it's the next step. It, it, it's an important step. So uh, just to give you a little background, this is from Taiji Tran through the Western Gate. And uh, in the chapter, chapter nine on coherence, the, uh, uh, the discussion is the uh, entraining the brain to heart coherence. So the and this is a, a, a lot of the research is done by the people at, at HeartMath, where they did, have done extensive laboratory and clinical research on the uh, on this. But the, the the basic idea behind it is your heart 
is the largest oscillating system in the body. That is, it produces a field, an electrical and magnetic field that is many times that of the brain or any other, any other organ. And so if we can get the heart into a state of coherence, so that it is in a high state of organization and, and harmony, then it has an effect that allows everything else to entrain to that because it is a stronger field. So the way they do it there is through heart meditations that allow you to, to tap into feelings of compassion, of love, appreciation, that sort of thing, so that the, we move into that, that compassionate, um, relaxed, even kind of feeling. And it's something that, um, uh, you know, there's a, the programs where you can actually see your effect of your mind on your heart. The mind creates the a heart coherence, which then feeds back onto the brain, which allows it to also calm down. So the, uh, the short answer is you get the heart coherent through feeling into the heart field and feeling compassionate and loving, appreciative, which then has the effect of calming down your brain. And it's something that is actually can be measured very um, uh, immediately on a, uh, on, on a device, on a computer, very simply too. And um, then beyond that, you can entrain, once you get your heart field in that state, in that highly coherent state, then it actually reverberates with other fields. And they've done experiments where they will have, do it remotely, have a person in one building do it with to another person, a person in another building. And as long as they're able to, to interact, or they've, they've interacted at some point, and then even when they're separated, there is a, a link between them that you can actually see parallel uh, effects on an EEG, say. So that, uh, so it's a very powerful stuff. And um, so uh, I get into it more in, in Taiji Trends through the Western Gate. So rather, uh, not gonna get into it too much tonight, but that was, that's a, a really good question. It, it, it ties into a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about too, which is body, mind, spirit integration. That if we can get into that, that, state we actually feel the heart then you can change your brain change your your state of being so maybe we'll try just do a, a very quick thing right now uh just spend a couple of minutes uh with a, a quiet meditation to play with that and the idea is what i would like you to do is to actually as you breathe, I want you to, to feel your heart, feel the pulse, and just tune into that. And you may be able, you may or may not be able to do it immediately. It is possible to do it, and it requires to calm your brain down, calm your mind down to be able to actually feeling into that. So you might just put your hand on your heart. And just tune into that. And there are lots of experiments that have been done indicating, showing the power of this particular activity that of actually slowing down and even counting your heartbeat.
Good. Just take a moment and just feel into your state right now, the state of your mind, the state of your energy, and just feel into that. I know that if you were to do a meditation where you just sat there for some minutes and just felt your heart, you're changing your body mind considerably just by doing that. You're bringing awareness, conscious awareness to a pre-conscious activity. Your heart doesn't need you to beat it. It happens to do a very fine job on its own, but it's, uh, it's still you, it's still part of you. So your pre-conscious mind is, is regulating that. It comes, you know, it, uh, your medulla oblongata has a lot to say in the matter, which when we open the jade pillow gate, the, at the base of the skull, by reaching up with the knee one, we activate the energy of the medulla oblongata and it has effect on the nerve, the vagus nerve, vagus nerve comes through there and that affects your, your parasympathetic nervous system, your heart, your lungs, your digestion, all that stuff. So all these things are tied in together and the more we can bring conscious awareness to this, the more we're able to access this yin state. So right now, what you're feeling right now is that feeling of yin chi. It is a, where things come together. We're not reaching out, we're bringing them together and in a highly organized, coherent way. So the, not the, the full extent of yin, but it, it is one, one manifestation of it, one feeling of, of yin chi. So the, when I first started exploring this stuff, I was trying to get a grip on, on what this chi stuff is all about. And, I knew it was there and I felt something, but I didn't really have a handle on it going back a few decades. But it was, um, um, the, first, the first thing I was able to identify was, was more or less energy. I was able to at least figure that part out. That was, that was my starting point. And then after playing around with that for a while, I realized that no, there's different qualities of energy. Different qualities that perform different functions. This is stuff that is in the, you know, in the traditions, but uh, I was kind of approaching it from a very uh, empirical, uh, in a, in a, in an empirical manner. So the, uh, the one thing I had a hard time grasping was this idea of yin chi. Because just about everything we identify with energy is the energy of doing. It's the energy of, of excitement, of uh, what we consider to be more energy is more excitement. And it took a while for me to realize that, no, no, there's this other energy that is complementary. It is the energy of being rather than doing. And my, my observation working with people for students and, and clients over the, you know, the last few decades is that most of us are yin deficient. That is, we are so in our heads, so in our thoughts that the yang chi is buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. And we're looking for the next buzz, we're looking for the next excitement and the ability to just slow down and to remove the distractions for a moment and to actually encounter the state of being was uh, not just missing in a lot of people, but it was actually threatening. And uh, I know um, 
my mother slept with the with the TV on, you know, all night. And she, she needed that that stimulation even while she was asleep. And um, you know, it's like, no, be able to find that that yin space, that quiet place where the noise just goes away for a moment. And doing that is actually the source of the power that we're we're looking for in this in the internal arts. You know, it's first be then do. And the, the what I have found uh, is the way we get to that being place is through feeling. To actually not feeling as an emotional thing, but feeling as a uh, a tactile thing, a sensory thing. So we're awakening the sensory neural network, which is largely happening at a pre-conscious level. So whenever we stop and just feel something, we access a different part of the brain. We move it out of the default mode network which is the little chatterbox there, which is going, 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 going. And we move into that quiet place, the gap between thoughts. And in the gap between thoughts, there's that we encounter being. So the um, getting into the feeling part sets the, sets the stage for the doing. So uh, the expression Wei Wu Wei is, uh, is a Chinese expression you know, that comes up in Tai Chi a lot. And that is, it's doing, it's basically, it literally means do not do. And it's doing based in non-doing, Wei Wu Wei. So, Everything that I do as part of my Kung Fu is, has that woven into it. It's not just, oh, what do I do next? Oh, did I get this right? Oh, is it? It's before the doing, there is a moment of non-doing. And that moment may only be, you know, a fraction of a second, but there is, there is that moment where I move into that state of, of being through the feeling. The feeling is my, is the active, uh, the active ingredient in it. And so we are, as, as humans, we're, we're wired by evolution to go immediately to the doing part. We respond to challenges by what can I do about this? Even if it's not happening here, it's happening here. And I find this particularly whenever I'm, you know, working with people playing push hands that, that sense of, you know, as soon as, as, soon as they, they feel something, there is a, the body wants to, wants to do, wants to, uh, wants to, wants to respond in a way. And that's because the, that's the efferent or the motor neural network. And that's where an impulse goes from the central nervous system to the muscles and says, muscles contract. And so they, uh, that's, that's that initial response. It is something that we have, developed through uh, millions of years of evolution as a survival trait, which uh, worked just fine for a long time, but less so now, less so now. And because it immediately takes us into the sympathetic nervous system, which gets us excited and more we get that agitated, anxious kind of feeling particularly when it's happening all the time, particularly whenever we're feeding ourselves more and more thoughts to get, get things excited. So being able to remove the distractions, pause for a moment and get to the gap between thoughts, be able to abide in that gap between thoughts, be able to say, oh, it's quiet here, for a, just for a moment then you start to get used to that. At first it's threatening, but then you 
say, oh, well, this, isn't, this isn't so bad. So uh, I've covered a lot of, touched on a lot of things here, and I'd actually like to hear uh, anybody's thoughts or questions on this before we, before we go forward, just to keep it, uh, keep it, you know, uh, some feedback out there. Richard. Um, <clears throat> what's coming to me is this phrase, First, feel your way into coherence. I like it. Okay, thanks. I, I stopped now. <laughs> I leave now. Now I'm leaving. Now I'm leaving the room. <laughs> no, that that I think that's accurate. Feel your way into coherence, because coherence means a bringing together, a bringing into a state of wholeness. So getting that ah. Oh, Getting the wholeness, not as a an objective sense of, of that is whole, but a from the inside, actually feeling the wholeness, and uh, that's the coherence. How do we get there? We move away from the part of the the brain mind that objectifies things and turns things into its. And we inhabit the, the moment from the inside. And with the uncertainty that comes with that, part of why we, we objectify things is we like order. We like things to be in nice little compartments and organized just so, so that we, the chaos of the universe is the unpredictability of it all is controlled for the moment because I've got names for things. But when, every time we name it, we have to separate out from it. So going into that gap between thoughts and getting developing a taste for it, number one, brings sort of a peace, clarity, centeredness to the body-mind. And number two, it empowers you to be able to get that effortless power, that chin that we were looking at. And so that's the, um, well, that's, 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 that's what, what, the, what the game is about as far as we're, we're concerned. So um, uh, any other questions, any thoughts? Excellent, that... yin. excellent, yin discussion, yin and coherence. Beautiful way you wove that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to make sure it was clear to everybody before we go before we go forward with it. So uh, everybody's got uh, tracking with me so far. Good. Good. Okay. Good. So the uh, we're getting to that 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 feeling. We want to get that. So I can and we're kind of moving away from uh, a lot of what we we've, we've been doing recently, which is giving you more cool stuff to do. And to actually come back and and go back on the inside and say this is how we get this is how we bring that stuff alive, it's not just more stuff you're going to learn how to do. It's oh, we're going to actually feel this. So getting that feeling of yin is it's not a passive thing. It's a gathering, and it. Um, it has its own feeling to it. And just as the young energies have many, many, many ways of expressing itself, right? So lots of ways to see energy in, in its excited form. The yin energy also has a lot of different feelings to it. So it, yeah, but it, it's more um, defined by its direction, that it's, it's, it's this rather than this. And uh, so let's, uh, I want to introduce you to a, uh, a Qigong. This is uh, kind of fitting for the, for the season. It's a, um, it's a bear meditation. And um, to, but the opportunity to explore the yin aspect. So I'm gonna break it down for you. I don't care if you memorize this, you don't have to. This is I want you to just feel it. I want you to 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 feel it if it's something you know you'll you can check on the video later if you if you uh, 
if you want to learn it. It's a pretty simple uh, thing, but it's uh, I don't want your conscious mind to be obsessing about memorizing this. I want you to actually just feel into the your body and and feel what that does to your energy. So let's uh, let's just stand up. So, start by just feeling balls your feet, feel your weight going throughout the whole foot, but it's as if you're pressing down with a button, pressing down on a button to the balls of the feet. That activates the yin energy coming up from the earth. You can feel the, the floor with your toes. Don't, don't tense them, just kind of feel them. Reach up with your knee one, the crown of your head, tuck in the chin. And feel the jade pillow gate opening up. Remember that the, at the location of the medulla oblongata, so it's going to activate your vagus nerve and bring the vagus nerve helps to coordinate all the internal organs. Bring your elbows out slightly. Notice how my arms are rounded, they're not collapsed like this. Arms are relaxed, shoulders are relaxed, but there is a Slight roundedness there to them. Feel your index fingers. Allow your energy to get coherent. And release your claw. Spiral down. Let that go. We're establishing the body as a conduit for the yin chi from the earth rising, the yang chi from the heavens coming down through the crown. Spiral down to the right, pick up your left heel and step out a little wider than usual. You want to be a little bit more than shoulder width. Upward slightly and feel yourself gathering. If you are picking up something, feel the weight of the space in your hands, on your arms, the weight of your arms, Bring your elbows out a little more. shoulders, reach with your elbows, reach with your fingers, reach with your wrists, opening the joints. So we're allowing the bear to enter now. Feel that. I'm getting introduced to that yin bear energy. Carrying something very slowly to feel the heaviness of it. Hands up.
Move your hands to the elbows down a little bit and feel your hands as if they're uh, floating. You've got water wings or something like that. You're on the, in, the, in the pool and you're feeling that your hands are just kind of feeling the resistance of the air below them, the space below them. Curtain this a little bit to fit into the, the space that people have. But, so the um, turn my body this way. You can act is going to be going this way now. And keep the keep this chi. So spiral down to your right. Turn to the left. Hands over. Sink into your left. Pick up your right heel. And step forward with the right foot. And turn to the right. Reaching out, opening up the shoulder joints, opening up the, the reaching with the elbows. And right ball, sink into the right claw, spiral down to the right. Pick up your left foot and step out and turn to the left. Pick it to the left claw. Pick up your right heel. Pick up your right foot. Step down and Right. Give your left claw spiral down to the right. Pivot on your left, your right heel, and turn. And turn all the way around so that you're reaching over to your left. Feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left. Pick up your right foot, step, and turn. Spiral down to the right, pick up your left heel. Step on the left foot and turn. I'm picking up the foot this way I learned it, but you don't have to, you can just pick a step if that's not too uh, uncomfortable. You can do your left, pick up your right foot, step and turn to the right. Your left pivot on your right heel. Step out with your left foot. Turn. And back to center. Think. 
Allow the yin chi to rise up and fill your body. Down. Feel into your body, feel your arms, your hands. Feel the spirit of vitality. Again. Feel it. Feel what's going on there. Feel your feet, through your hands, through your head, through your shoulders. <coughs> Take a deep breath. Come up. Disappear the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. When we disappear the chi like that, we, we empty out uh, the stuff that's already been used. We create space. We create a vacuum, allows the nature chi to move through it even more, amplifies that. We become conduits for the big chi. Yeah. Okay. Grab a seat. Cool. So let's uh I like to see if anybody has any questions on that, any thoughts uh anything that needs more explanation, and then I'd like to do it again. So, uh, um, so anybody, uh, anything that, uh, any areas that, that need clarification? Yes, Rick. Ben. Yes, uh, when we're, uh, uh, we're having the arms in that position where they're like floating, does that continue all the way around? Or yeah, that feeling? Well, the, the floating is more just sort of a, not, not the fact that they're, they're floating so much um, that they're like uh, clouds, but they're, they're feeling the, you know, when your body floats, it's, 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 oh. you're, you're feeling the resistance of the thing that it's, that it's that it's oh. sitting on, almost like clouds. No, like water in a pool. Like water in a, in a pool. In water in a pool, yeah. So you're you're uh -huh. you know so you like water waves, like you know you're 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 okay, there. I I see. You're, you're not dropping down through the water. You're you're feeling the resistance of the water. There's the displacement of of, of the water is ah, allowing okay. your 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 arm to stand up. So you're feeling that with the with the space. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Sorry. Um, so I have a question. I found myself uh, at times getting hung up in the doing rather than in the being. So uh, is, is it just fine to stand in that position rather yeah. than, than turn? Yes. Yeah, so whatever, whatever works for you. I, you know, I showed the way I learned it, you know, the, uh, but it doesn't have, to, uh, doesn't have to be that way. The important thing is feeling the energy, the yin chi, yes. and getting the bare energy. Right, and bear chi is a different quality than water chi. You say both are yin, but you know that, and and bear chi can be other other qualities as well. Bear can be any kind of energy, but it, it, the one that I showed you was you know there's a, a distinct kind of metal bear, and uh, so the um, uh, the important thing is getting that, so so not to get hung up in, in the doing. Ah, yes. Yep. And the doing gives, the, gives the, the, the conscious mind something to play with so that it, uh, you know, you can distra distract that for a moment. Cool. How does that feel for people? Would, would that, uh, did, did, did that do the trick? Uh, we were okay. able to get, uh, able to get a, a sense of what I'm talking about with, with the yin chi. Yes. Yes. I, I think it's... Yeah, I, felt, I think I felt more like of a warmth with it. I don't know if that's normal. I felt like more of a warm feeling. Uh, that's that's fine too. That's, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, that that's that indicates more chi flow. And that's that's mm -hmm. that's great too. The uh, there's a I guess it, it, it there's a density to it is more of a down feeling, like it's moving more toward compression rather than expansion. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anybody else? Okay, good. So we'll do that again? Yes. We'll try that again? Okay, so. Yes. Start facing you again. See what's going on. Um, don't worry about getting it right. Just feel into it. Bow down to the right. Step out. A little wider than usual. Important here to be sewn, so if we can release the claw, sinking down. To your feet, to your fingers. And as you do that, notice the gap between thoughts. forward Keep open. Reaching with the elbow feel into that feel what's happening inside your body feel all the little adjustments that are occurring you don't have to identify any of them, just feel them. In fact, you were talking about you know, feel the stillness and movement, feel the movement in stillness. Bow forward, 
coming down there. Feel the weight of your arms. Back to your shoulders, reach with your elbows. You're reaching out, not contracting muscles, you're reaching out, extending. Feel as though your arms are being supported by the space underneath them. Just kind of relaxing, allowing them to float on those, that space. Right now. the left. Pick up your right heel and step out. And turn. Reaching out. I want you to be in the on the back foot. So give it on your right heel, turn the foot out. Just think into that. Step out with your left foot and turn to the left. Before you do anything, I want you to just feel, feel this, feel, allow yourself to move in that state of being. Put your left heel. Put it on your left heel, turn the foot out. Just feel into that. Think of your left, left leg, feel the ball set the knee, spiral down to the left. Pick up your right heel. Feel that. Step out with your right foot and turn. Feel that. Each step of the way. Your feeling. Give it on your right heel. Up your left one. And turn. Give it on your left heel. Bow down to the left. Pick up your right foot, your right heel. Feel that. Sink into that. Step up. And turn. Put it on your right heel. Right ball. Set the right knee. Step down, down to the right. Pick up your left foot. <coughs> step out. Left heel, bow down to the left. With your right foot, step out and turn. Your left, pivot on your right heel, step out with your left. Feel into that. Feel the expansiveness of it. At the same time, it's condensing. Come down. Feel the energy. Step in. Breath. 
and visibility. I really felt the heat that time too, Sandy. <laughs> it, it, it cranked it up. Oh, definitely. Cool. Uh, how'd it go for everybody? Good. Oh, Yes, thank you. Good, good, good. Good. Yes. Dennis. Yeah, there's there's no limit on repetitions that you can do on that, right? Right. You know, you just just feel it. Like I said before, you most of us are yin deficient, so getting <laughs> more of that, your 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 body will tell you, okay, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is it, like okay, yeah, I, I'm 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 done with that for today, and uh, but it. You know, you're you're training the body, training your body mind to be able to acclimate to the other side, the missing the missing energy for most of us, which is that you know the deep abiding, peaceful, stable, comforting quality that uh, that uh, the yin energy provides us. Very good. Cool. Okay. Um, you have any, any thoughts? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> everybody's very quiet tonight. The, uh, yeah, so I guess to uh, recapitulate, getting the, getting that feeling sense, getting the sense of using feeling to establish a state of being first before doing, then allows us to activate more of what we have, more of our capabilities than if we're just memorizing movements and, and executing movements. So to actually, it doesn't matter if you just start, just if you just pick up your hand and move, so there is, the motor function says, okay, move the hand. So it does that by muscular contraction. But if you pick your hand up like that and you move across and you feel as you're doing it, then you are integrating, you're awakening more of your brain, more of your mm -hmm. nervous system by doing that. And if you can, feel and then do, then you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to execute in uh, more in present time. Mm. Yes. Cool. Okay. Um, but, uh, great. So this is the uh, new time. Uh, I hope it works for people. And uh, Love to you all. See you next week. Bye bye. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Rick. That was great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.